Another cup of Maxwell House coffee, George? Sure. Pour me a cup, Gracie. You know, Maxwell House is always good to the last <laughs> drop. And that drop's good, too. Yes, it's Maxwell House Coffee Time, starring George Burns and Gracie Allen. With our special guest tonight, Kay Kaiser, yours truly, Toby Reed, Gail Gordon, Elliot Lewis, Jerry Hausner, Meredith Wilson and the Maxwell House Orchestra, and Bill Goodwin. For America's Thursday night comedy enjoyment, it's George and Gracie. And for America's everyday coffee drinking enjoyment, it's Maxwell House. Always good to the last drop. As we join the Burnses today, we find Gracie seated at the soda fountain at the corner drugstore. There you are, Mrs. Burns, a double banana split with six kinds of ice cream, hot fudge, marshmallow syrup, maraschino cherries, nuts, and whipped cream. Thanks, Al. Now, what would you like to drink with that? Oh, better make it uh, grape juice. I'm trying to lose weight. <laughs> okay. Say, Al, isn't that Kay Kaiser heading over this way? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's the old professor. Oh, my goodness, he looks like he's in a trance. Well, he's been that way ever since his new baby arrived. He has to take care of it, and it keeps him up all night. Oh, the poor man. Let me have a milkshake, Al. <laughs> what flavor, Mr. Kaiser? Cod liver oil. <laughs> I mean chocolate. And pass me the nipples. Uh, I, I mean the straws. Oh, hello, Gracie. Hello, Kay. I hope you'll excuse my appearance, Gracie. I'm really bushed. Yeah, you do need a shave. I mean, I'm tired. Oh. Well, congratulations on your new baby, Kay. I'd love to see it. Brand new babies are so cute. Yeah. They look like little wrinkled up old men. Yes. That reminds me. How's George? <laughs> How's your beautiful wife, Georgia? Well, Georgia's doing fine, but walking the floor all night with little Carol Amanda is sure killing me. Gracie, do you know where I can find a good baby nurse? No. All the nurses I know are grown up. <laughs> no, I mean someone to take care of the baby. Oh. Especially tonight. The doctor says Georgia can get out for the first time, and my sponsor has invited us to dinner... But there's nobody to stay with the baby. Oh, I wish I could do it for you, Kay, but this is my club meeting night. And say, wait a minute. George will do it. He loves children. He does? Oh, sure, he's crazy about me. <laughs> Grace, you've saved my life. I'm sure George will make a wonderful babysitter. <laughs> George, you know who I saw at the drugstore? Kay Kaiser. Really? Mm hmm. He just had a new baby. I know. Say, that reminds me, uh, did you send the baby a present? Yeah. I sent it a bottle of champagne. <laughs> <laughs> sent the baby a bottle of champagne? Well, I heard they were going to christen it. <laughs> Gracie, that's not for christening babies. You would only send champagne to people who had a new boat. Oh, George, how can you be so ignorant? People don't have boats. <laughs> <laughs> what I was trying to say oh, is... Oh, no, that sounds silly. Mother and canoe doing well. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm trying to say well, is... How would it sound for a mother to call the doctor and say, Come quick, Junior's got barnacles. <laughs> What I'm trying to say really, is Really, Judge, for a man with no education, you can be awfully dumb at times. <laughs> Drop the whole subject. Hey, guys, you can drink the champagne. Oh, and, and he needs it, George. The poor man is a wreck. Okay? How come? Well, he's been taking care of that new baby, and it's, it's really got him worn out. You'd hardly recognize him. You know how he used to look? Yeah. Well, now he looks even worse. <laughs> That's impossible. <laughs> you feel sorry for him, don't you, George? You bet. Well, good, because... Boy, there's I... something I wouldn't do for a million dollars. What? Take care of a baby. <laughs> you, you wouldn't? No, sir. 
But Not George, me. George, taking care of a baby would be easy. You don't even have to wash them nowadays. You don't have to wash them? No, they have baby laundry. <laughs> <laughs> well, still wouldn't like to take care of a baby. Oh, shame on you. Don't you have any mother instinct? No. I was an incubator baby. <laughs> I don't believe it. Your father never have been happy married to one of those. <laughs> uh, go away and let me read the paper. <laughs> Meredith, I called you over because I need your help. There's trouble, Gracie? Well, yes. George is going to be a mother tonight, but he doesn't know yet. Gee, we better rush him to the hospital. No, I, I mean... I mean, I promised Kay Kaiser that George would take care of his baby. But George has no mother instinct. Perhaps I can stir that emotion in his bosom if I regale him with a tender story. Oh, I knew I could count on you, Meredith. Come on, he's in the den. Hello, George. Hiya, man. George, would you like to hear the story of a baby I used to take care of back in my hometown of Mason City, Iowa? Definitely no. Well, sir, Why that blue-eyed... Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> that blue-eyed, golden-haired infant I wanted to tell you about, that infant and I spent many happy hours together playing patty cake, crawling around on the floor, or both of us riding piggyback. How could you both ride piggyback? We have very large pigs in Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Meredith... Well, you... sir... After I left Mason City, I often thought of that child blossoming into blue-eyed, golden-haired womanhood. And I swore someday to return and make her my bride. Oh, how sweet. Why didn't you do it? There'd been a slight miscalculation. When I returned, the infant had blossomed into a blue-eyed, golden-haired fullback on the Iowa football team. <laughs> Is that all? Yes, George. In my humble way, I've tried to show you the meaning of love. Thanks. Now I've, uh, I've something to show you. What is it? The door. <laughs> Very attractive door. Oak, isn't it? I want you to see it from the outside. <laughs> well, if one side is oak, surely the other side must be. Well, Meredith has got a point. Yeah, you ought to wear a hat to cover it. <laughs> Goodbye, Meredith. Goodbye, all. Goodbye, all. What a schmoe. Well, he didn't change your mind about liking to take care of babies? No. What's all this talk about uh, about taking care of babies, Oliver? Don't tell me he's back. Come in. Hello, George. Well, Kay, congratulations on that new baby. How's Georgia? Georgia's fine. I just dropped by to thank you. Thank me? Oh, oh, over the champagne. Well, not only that, uh, but for what you're going to... Uh, tell us about your little girl. Uh, what school does she go to now? <laughs> school? Gracie, she's only three weeks old. She can't even crawl yet. Oh, well, let her go on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> she's still a little young, Gracie, but, but when she gets old enough, I'm going to send her to my old alma mater, the University of North Carolina, down in my home state. Oh, well, I'm surprised to hear you're from North Carolina, Kay. Why, Gracie? Well, you don't talk like a man from the North. <laughs> I thought you were from some southern state like, uh, South Dakota. George, should I try to explain it? Do you want to look like me? No. Then let it go. <laughs> Anyway, Gracie, I want my little girl to go to school in the greatest state in the Union, North Carolina. Oh, oh look, here comes our Texas friend, Mr. Judson. I'll go fix some refreshments for it. Okay, Gracie. Come in. Howdy, little man. Hello, Mr. Judson. Like you to meet our friend, Mr. K. Kaiser. Happy to make your acquaintance, Mr. Kaiser. Well, the pleasure is all mine, sir. Say, you don't sound like a Californian. I'm not. I'm a citizen of the greatest state in the Union. Is that right? Sure. What part of Texas are you from? <laughs> I'm not from Texas. I'm from the tobacco state, North Carolina. North what? Carolina. Don't tell me you never heard of North Carolina. I never heard of no part of Carolina. 
having any trouble here. Well, now, for your information, sir, there's a place down south where thousands and thousands of happy, industrious people live in an earthly paradise that stretches for hundreds of miles. And do you know what that place is? If it was a little bigger, it could be Fort Worth. <laughs> Tell him there really is a North Carolina. Sure. Mr. Judson, Texas isn't the only southern state. There's North Carolina, Alabama, Tennessee, Georgia. Well, now, maybe there is a North Carolina, but I bet it don't amount to nothing. <laughs> don't amount to nothing? Why, man, North Carolina turns out a million bales of cotton every year. That ain't enough cotton to keep Dallas in dish rags. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Judson, stop picking on Kay. The poor guy's worried enough now. He just had a baby. You had a baby? Well, I don't deserve all the credit. I had some help from Georgia. <laughs> I knew North Carolina couldn't handle it alone. <laughs> well, listen, easy, you long easy, easy, Kay. Long easy, horn. easy. Well, hello, long... Mr. Judson. Well, howdy, little lady. <laughs> Kay and Mr. Judson almost got into a brawl about Texas and North Carolina. Oh, now, I, I was just joshing him. Uh-huh. Now, to show there's no hard feelings, Mr. Kaiser, I'd like to send that new baby of yours a present. Well, thank you. Uh, uh, could she use a perambulator? Oh, no, no, she's too young to make coffee. <laughs> Somebody Loves Me, I Wonder Who. You know, Meredith, that title must have been inspired by an unsigned valentine. Not by any of the valentines my zany friends send me, Toby. It's much too pretty a song. Ah, but it's the pretty cards I was thinking of. I mean the hearts and flowers type. The traditional valentines with satin hearts, clusters of forget-me-nots, lace frills. Yes, and the poetic message filled with expressions of love and endearment. The tender sentiments that make February 14th such a fond and romantic part of our American scene. Yes, and just as much a part of the American scene as our fondness for a friendly cup of America's favorite brand of coffee, Maxwell House. We Americans love a cup of good coffee, which points up this fact. Today, more people buy and enjoy Maxwell House than any other brand at any price. This nationwide preference has been won for Maxwell House by flavor, that mellow, good-to-the-last-drop flavor which you can credit to the skilled blending of these premium Latin American coffees. Manizales for mellowness. Medellins for richness. Other choice coffees for robust vigor. And Bucaramanga's for fine, full body. All painstakingly combined in a truly great blend, radiant roasted to flavor perfection, and brought to you roaster fresh two ways, either in the familiar blue tin or in the brand new ultra vacuum glass jar. So, friends, are you now enjoying the extra flavor of America's favorite coffee? You can do it for just a fraction of a penny more per cup than the cheapest coffee sold. Insist on Maxwell House, always good to the last drop. Hello? Hello, 
Georgia. This is Kay, honey. I'll be right home when I got some good news. We can go to dinner with the sponsor tonight. Yeah, George Burns is going to stay with the baby. George Burns. No, he won't frighten it. Yeah. <laughs> now, listen, you get yourself all put it up, and we'll go to him. Say, Gracie, when Kay Kaiser left for home, he said he wanted to thank me for the favor I'm doing for him tonight. Uh-oh. What favor am I doing for him? Uh, uh, favor? Yeah. You? Yeah. Doing? Yeah. For him? Yeah, I'm doing him a favor. Really? What is it? <laughs> That's what I asked you. Now, come on. What did you tell Kay I do? Well, I guess I'll have to tell you. You see, he's got a radio program. I know that. It's sponsored by Colgate Palm Olive Peter. You mean Colgate Palm Olive Pete. Now, I don't know him that well. <laughs> Let it go. What did you tell Kay I do? Well, you see, Kay wants to make a good impression on his sponsor tonight. And that's where you come in. Oh, I get it. He wants me to sing on his program. Uh, huh? From time to time and every climb, blessings come from above. Uh, George, look, that's, that's not what Kay wants. Oh, Oh, he wants me to swing it, huh? Boom, 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 down in the garden where the red rose grows. Oh, George, my George, beloved. George, so, George, oh, 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 George, I don't think you'll need your tuxedo. Certainly I will. I'm gonna I'm gonna wear it tonight when I wait for him. Well, all right. But you better wear an apron over it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, go on and have it press. Well, Kay, here I am. All ready to go to work. Oh, that's swell. But, George, why the tuxedo? For the job tonight. Makes me irresistible. Yeah? Sure. When I wear this, they drool over me. <laughs> well, it's your tuxedo. <laughs> and now, Kay, about tonight, you better give me a few instructions. Do you want me to swing it? Swing it? Yeah, you know, rock it. Oh, oh, no, no, I wouldn't rock it too much. Just burp it. <laughs> burp it? Does Sinatra do that? Certainly. And I wish I had a nickel for every one Crosby has burped. <laughs> well, I guess there are tricks in every trade. Yeah, but tell me, George, do you mind doing this sort of thing? Mind? <laughs> I should say not. This is what I like to do. Okay, I'm tired of telling jokes on the radio. I want to make a change. Well, brother, this is opportunity night. Okay, <laughs> it'll be a pleasure to do this for you. Believe me, you've got a mighty sweet little group. Well, thanks, George. Maybe you'll have one someday. I'd like to. A little group of about eight or ten. <laughs> be quite a surprise to Gracie, wouldn't it? Yeah. I guess it would. And later on, I might increase it to 20 or 25. You should live so long. <laughs> Naturally, I'd, uh, I'd get permission from Petrillo first. <laughs> you would? Sure. Didn't, uh, didn't you have to get his permission? No. Believe it or not, that's the one thing I didn't have to check with Petrillo. <laughs> uh, what do you know? Well, George, I hate to rush, but my wife and the sponsor are waiting at the Derby. That's okay. I'm ready. Yeah, it sure is wonderful of you to stay with the baby. Oh, I'm good. What? <laughs> Gracie said you'd do it, but I didn't believe it till you showed up. Gracie said I'd stay with the well, baby. Well, I'm late. So okay. long. I'm, so long. I'm, I'm all set to vocalize. So is the baby. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Ah, what a night. 
Nurse made the cake, Kaiser's baby. <laughs> Maybe she would stop crying if she thought I was a father. <laughs> Evening, folks. How are you all? <laughs> Gets dance. <laughs> Gets me happy. <laughs> Yet shut up. <laughs> Come in. Uh, hello, dear. I brought Bill Goodwin over to cheer you up. Yeah, cheer up, George. You've been wanting a new automobile. What do you mean? Here's the latest model, Kaiser. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody is going to steal that. <laughs> George, I just thought I'd tell a joke and cheer you up. Well, you didn't do either one. <laughs> what a cute little baby. Oh, just think of the wonderful thrills life holds in store for her. Her first two. Her first step. Her first word. Her first day at school. Her first date. Her first party dress. And then the one great thrill that comes to every girl. That glorious moment she waits for. Dreams about. Her first cup of Maxwell House coffee. <laughs> you know, Maxwell House is the very best in coffee drinking pleasure, yet it costs but a fraction of a penny more per cup than the cheapest coffee you can buy. Hey, won't that be a thrill, baby? <laughs> When she'd marry a wonderful man, one like I got. Won't that be a thrill, baby? <laughs> Wait a minute, what are you trying to do? Discourage the kid? Oh, there, 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 baby. You won't have to marry the bad old man. The only drip in your life will be Maxwell House. You know, baby, with thousands of brands to choose from, more people buy and enjoy Maxwell House than any other brand of coffee in the world. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Bill, that baby can't understand a word you're saying, so you can stop telling it about Maxwell House. Look, George, aren't you staying with the baby so Kay Kaiser can make a hit with his sponsor? Yeah. So don't louse me up with mine. And you know, baby, Maxwell House comes to you roaster fresh two ways now. In the familiar blue vacuum tin, or in the new ultra vacuum glass jar. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. <laughs> George? yeah? George, this is really a cute baby. Well, if you think she's so cute, maybe you'd like to spend an evening with her. Well, you bet I would. I'll be back later. How soon? About 18 years. So long. <laughs> Well, this is great. Even at that age, they cry for good ones. Well, goodbye, dear. I'm off to the bridge club. You're staying right here and help me take care of this baby. But, George, you don't need me. Look, here's a list of instructions Kay left for you. Well, let's see what it says. Eight o'clock, baby's feeding time. Be sure nipples, rubber bottle caps, and strainer are thoroughly boiled. Oh, my goodness. How can she digest that stuff? <laughs> You've got to dunk it first oh. to soften it. <laughs> you think Kay Kaiser could afford to buy a cow and give his baby milk? Gracie, the baby, the baby does get milk. The formula's right here. It gets acidophilus milk. Well, I think it should have cow milk. <laughs> you never know what an acidophilus has been eating. Well, I'll read some more of the instructions. Be sure to keep the baby well powdered. Well, now, if that isn't ridiculous... Who cares if the baby has a shiny nose? <laughs> Isn't that what you say, baby? <laughs> now listen, that's just great. Between you and the baby, I'll go crazy. <laughs> I'm going to call a professional babysitting service and turn the job over to them. <laughs> I'm the sitter from the babysitting service. Well, you're right here on time. Hey, I know you. 
You're the guy with that terrible temper who's always quitting a job. Well, that's because those other jobs were too hard on me. When I was a mechanic, I had to work with my hands. When I was a delivery boy, I had to use my feet. Now I'm a babysitter. <laughs> Well, come in and get to work. I'm so happy with this job. Well, I'm happy for you. Uh, how much do you charge? Well, the fee is a dollar, but I'd do it for nothing. It thrills me to think that the babies I sit with may be the famous citizens of tomorrow. Governors, congressmen. Well, here's your dollar. Someday I may walk up to one and say, Senator, I was with you the first time you ever opened your mouth and put your foot in it. Take the dollar. I'm so happy with this job. <laughs> Look at that precious little cherub lying there, so sweet, so innocent. And those toys beside her crib. The little teddy bear, the toy drum. I see the drum. Take the dollar. I'm please. so happy She's with happy. this job. <laughs> well, it must be for you to come home at night and see that little toy drum on the floor. Wait a minute. <laughs> if it's dark, you might not see the drum. I'll make it two dollars. You'll stumble over it. You'll lose your balance. You'll crash to the floor. Ten dollars, ten dollars. You'll break your leg. You'll fracture your arm. You might even break your neck. I'll throw on my tuxedo. And oh, because that baby left its drum on the floor. Well, they can't force me to sit with this demon in diapers who breaks people's necks. I'll quit this sinking job. <laughs> baby to sleep. Oh, I knew your voice would do it, darling. When you sing, even grown-ups have trouble staying awake. Yeah. Oh, thanks. And when you open your mouth to sing, it's like opening a bottle of chloroform. <laughs> thanks again. Well, folks, I'm back. Did you have any trouble with the baby? Oh, not a bit, Kay. George sang it to sleep. Really? Can George sing? Can George sing? That's like asking if Cougar can fight. <laughs> Okay, uh, I was hoping to sing on your program. Uh, give him a sample, Sugar Throat. Show him how you sang the baby to sleep. Okay. rock a baby on the treetop when the wind blows. <laughs> George! Oh, uh, hey, listen, boy. That key's good enough for me. <laughs> That key is good enough for me, boy. I'd like to sign you to a five-year exclusive contract right now. Oh, now, you see, George, and you thought I got you in trouble. You mean it, Kay? An exclusive contract? Yes, sir, George. From now on, you do all my babysitting. Right. <laughs> Join us again next Thursday when we'll all be back. George Burns, Gracie Allen, Bill Goodwin, Meredith Wilson, and the Maxwell House Orchestra, and yours truly, Toby Reed. Good things. The easy way. Do you like good things the easy way? Then get instant Maxwell House coffee. So good. So good. True coffee flavor and fragrance because instant Maxwell House is not a so-called coffee product. It's all pure Maxwell House coffee in instant form. And so easy. So easy. Instant Maxwell House means great coffee instantly in your cup. No fuss, no muss, no bother. Today, try Instant Maxwell House. Instantly good to the last drop. Until next Thursday, good night and good luck from the makers of Maxwell House, America's number one preferred brand of coffee. Always good to the last drop. The George Burns and Gracie Allen Show is written by Paul Henning and Keith Fowler. And now stay tuned in for Noah Webster says... This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. Thank you.